Hi, everybody. Welcome to Patrick Scale Studio. My name's Patrick. I'll be your host. Thank you for joining me. By the way, Happy New Year. Ready for 2024. Um, so when we last had a uh, build video, it was uh, number five, and we were talking about painting the hole. Since then, I've had an unmasking. Um, so here is the finished hole, and I actually even put on a semi trans or semi flat, semi gloss um, clear finish over it also, and then just uh, X35, and I mix this in a one one ratio with Mr. Leveling Thinner, and sprayed that on. Sprayed it on pretty heavy, and the main reason is is kind of help protect the paint finish underneath um, but also when we go to start weathering this um, it will prevent the chemicals from the thinners and things like that we're going to use to weather it um, from getting to the underlying paint as well um, then it also kind of helps bring it together so I got it uh, remounted here to our build board with the foam blocks in there for protection um, but as you can see there it is. All right. I'll put that aside. Um, the next thing I've done also off camera here has to do with the deck. And that is a um, Vallejo light ghost gray primer. Um, it sprays well. It's a basic acrylic primer. Um, when you do use those primers, always make sure that you're thinning either with uh, water or with the airbrush thinner specifically made by Vallejo. Uh, the Vallejo paints and their primers react badly with uh, most other thinners that are alcohol-based. And it just causes the paint to gunk up instead of thin. Uh, the main reason here for the primer is to detect any errors that I might need to correct before I go through the work of putting down um, paint. It will also help us identify any issues here or anything like that uh, with the pieces themselves as far as uh, environmental hazards. Uh, if your house is like mine and you have a healthy population of cats and dogs, you're going to have some you're going to have some pet hair floating around so the best way to kind of detect any of that hair or dust or any of that stuff even despite your best attempt at getting it dust free and hair free and doing everything you can to prevent it you're still usually going to get a hair here and there um, so as i can see here we've got one right there if i can get the focus to improve so there's one there was another one so the primer will help point these things out and allow me to go back in with some really fine grade sandpaper um, and some tweezers and pick those things out. Also, I think we got a hair on this piece right there as well. So, But after we get those parts cleaned up, then we can put down the deck color, the main deck color. Um, and on this... I have actually decided to use different colors than originally planned. Originally, I had planned on using XF53 for the main deck color and 83 for uh, secondary, kind of like the trim. Um, and the difference in the colors is mainly just because on the deck, they've got this anti-slip coating. Um, it's the same color as, you know, it's the same color through and through. But where the anti-slip is, the paint actually looks a little bit lighter than the trim. Or at least that's how I'm interpreting that. So uh, being that this is the USS Curtis Wilbur early in her career uh, in the 90s, the, the deck paint uh, and my resources and pictures looks darker. So I intend to use XF24. For the parts of the deck where it's non-slip and then 
um, stick with 53 from the main deck, but to use that as the secondary, that trim color, um, a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to get these parts cleaned up here from any hairs, um, and we'll be back and start working on getting some color down. All right, so got everything there fixed, hairs removed. You can see uh, I've sanded just a touch down to the actual plastic right there in order to remove any traces or hints that there were hairs there. Um, and scale of 1 200, uh, hair there would look <laughs> wildly and grossly out of scale, like a fire hose almost. Um, another spot right there. Uh, we had a spot there, a spot here. And just about did it. There were some that were very, very faint and are just able to pretty much just brush off with my finger. Um, but for the most part, everything there looks looks great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go back over everything um, in those spots with a little bit of the uh, primer. Uh, this also helps give the uh, next uh, step or the next color, paint color, a little bit of tooth to grab onto and hold well. Um, so definitely going to prime it. But first, in order to make sure that uh, I don't get hairs again in the primer I'm about to put down, I'm going to use this device right here. Um, it's for the most part an electric version of canned air, um, and it just kind of helps brush everything off and uh, get rid of any hairs or dust or anything like that. Um, definitely highly recommend one of these. It's like 15 bucks on Amazon. So I'm going to go ahead and get it blown off, and then we'll uh, get some primer in there and get these spots touched up. Okay, now that that's all set, go ahead and get to putting this primer down. You don't need a whole lot. I guess those spots weren't very large. All right. We have paint coming out, so we're ready to go. Looks like we've got uh, all the trouble spots covered, and it does not look like we've got any hairs or anything like that that uh, went into our retouch, so that's good. Oh, there's another spot. There looks good still. Everything here still looks good. This is a spot I missed. All right. Now, usually that takes about uh, 
three to four hours to fully dry. Um, and then you can always leave it overnight to cure as well, um, just for that additional hardness and that curing time. Um, or you can use a hair dryer to accelerate the curing time. So just the standard old hair dryer will work just fine. Um, the only thing you need to be careful of is that you don't let it get too hot on the plastic so it doesn't warp or deform the pieces that you're working on and you're trying to get to cure faster. But uh, usually a low setting on any regular hair dryer is is plenty good enough to get that to speed up. So we said after that, our next step is going to be applying dark gray, uh, XF24 dark gray. So we'll be back here again when we're ready to start on that. Well, we've given our primer plenty of time to dry. It's cured, and we can put some real paint color down on here. Um, and I think I told you before, backwards, we are going to be laying down XF53 as the main overall, and then the secondary was going to be XF24 dark gray. Um, if you go online and look at uh, pictures of the real thing, you're going to see that most of it is uh, a lighter gray. The horizontal surfaces are a dark gray, but that's there's still even a darker gray yet that goes around the base of all of the superstructure, the vertical launch systems, the mounting for the five-inch gun, and even the uh, entire perimeter of the shri of the ship. So I'm going to put this down first. Give this a full amount of time to fully cure, then we're going to have to mask this off um, or applying that darker gray. And then we'll mask more of this off so that we can go in and paint this, the XF12 IJN gray. So because it's a vertical uh, bulkhead, it's got to match the uh, rest of what the vertical surfaces are painted as. But uh, horizontal surfaces, main horizontal surfaces, we're going to lay down this XF53 neutral gray. So I will uh, put some color here on my airbrush, and uh, we'll put it under this one right here first, and then I won't bore you with airbrushing this entire deck piece because that'll take some time, but uh, you'll definitely see the finished result. So we'll go ahead and add some color. This is thin uh, one to one ratio of paint to Mr. Leveling Thinner. I like the lack of. I'm going to go ahead here and check. Right, so we've got some paint flowing out. That's good. And go ahead and start laying this down. Okay, 
So we've got enough paint down. We'll probably go over it a second time here after uh, we go over the main deck piece. But uh, again, I'm not going to bore you with doing the same thing over another piece. It's about five times as big. Uh, so we'll return here in just a few seconds with all of it painted. Well, now that has both of the deck pieces painted in XF53, uh, what I'm going to use for as our main deck color. You can see the paint went down pretty nicely, but I want to allow it to fully set up, fully cure, before I go in and start masking anything off. Right here, same deal. Is it the world's best paint job? No, not by far. Uh, it's just going to be impossible while you're living in a house with cats and dogs. But for the most part, any terribly obvious hairs and things like that are not present on here. Um, so I didn't bother painting this or this because there's going to be pieces of superstructure that go over top of those. So this is just dead space. Um, the VLS systems uh, get uh, uh, get the uh, XF12 color to uh, match all the vertical surfaces. So I didn't paint these. I didn't bother painting this just yet. And back here, of course, is also going to be the XF12 color. So uh, those won't get any paint um, for right now. Our next step, though, on this is going to be to mask off everywhere where we want this color to remain and then start cutting out areas where we're going to go in with the XF24 dark gray, and it's almost like uh, trim, almost like trim work there on the uh, edge of the ship and around fittings and major structures and things like that. Um, both pieces will get that treatment. Once we've gotten that laid down, we'll mask off anywhere where uh, we might affect that, and we'll uh, start using the XF12 there for the vertical launch systems and any of the other fittings that are sticking up that need to get the XF12 so that uh, the color matches what the superstructure and all the vertical surfaces are going to look like. On the back end here, when we're ready to do this, we're going to end up black basing at first using X XF1 uh, just because there's so much going on here and it'd be really great to have some artificial shadows that'll come in after we spray on the XF-12. Um, we just spray it in a fashion where it's kind of like an angular spray. It's going to help us create some artificial shadows, which will really help some of this tiny little stuff pop out at you. We'll also have to paint the air traffic control windows here. Uh, so they look like windows and, uh, you know, wonder how that's going to happen. Well, I mean, we'll just put like a light blue and various shades of blue or something like that here on one of the panes, some of the other panes, just so it looks like it's reflected light. And then once we get all of that done, then we can go ahead and mount these two pieces into our ship's hull. And it'll look pretty cool, kind of something like that right there. And then at that point, we'll be able to start putting in the superstructure elements, putting on the rest of the fittings on the deck, um, the anchors, chains, five inch gun. We'll be able to put some of the little uh, 50 caliber guns in, the 25 millimeter Bushmaster gun in. Uh, and like I said, you know, there's some, I don't know how to, it looks just kind of like a out in the air bridge area right here that connects these two pieces, the superstructure and the funnels. So a lot of fun in store for us. But that's all we can do for now uh, while this dries and sets up fully. So that will do it for build log video number six. As always, if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or concerns, uh, please feel free to comment. Um, and let me know. I thank you very much for joining me and look forward to our next build blog video. Take care and happy new year.